and after quite a long break from making these videos, I'm finally back. There's been a lot of things happening and the main one of course is the new house. When you look behind it, you can see a small wooden shed and after some negotiating with my girlfriend, I got full access to it, so of course, new workshop. After a really long winter, the weather is finally starting to get nicer, which means electric skateboard season is starting soon, but when you look at my electric skateboard, it's in multiple pieces. In one of the last videos, I showed you my new remote, and Flipsky really liked the video, so they offered to send me some new motors, which were the exact ones I wanted to get for ages. They are the Flipsky 6354 BLDC motors, with a KV rating of 140, so really torquey. Each motor can output a maximum of 2450 watts, so in total this will be around 5000 watts of power under my feet. I got them with 10mm shafts and a D-slot to keep the pulley secured, and when looking at them side by side with my old motors, you can see how huge the difference is. With the new motors on the desk, my task now is to mount them to the longboard, and in most cases you would use one of the electric skateboard motor mounts, which can be easily purchased on many sites. For the trucks, I went with the original Caliber 2 trucks, since they are the OGs, and for them there's a ton of off-the-shelf options, but I did have some special requirements for mine. I wanted to use 15mm wide belts, which are a lot wider than usual, and not many mounts offer this option since there's not much clearance when everything is bolted to the truck. And also, for what they are, these mounts are kind of expensive and so, of course, I wanted to build my own. My friend and I did some CAD and eventually ended up with this model. I got the caliber truck from GrabCAD as well as the wheel pulley and the only thing that was a little bit tricky was getting the motor pulley designed. The original pulleys use M3 grub screws which strip super easily, so to make this stronger I went with M5. There was a small issue though and it's that the grub screw didn't exactly fit into the alignment hole on the shaft. So after some searching on AliExpress, I found these special grub screws, which have a pin with a smaller bore on top that fits tightly inside the securing hole. I got the parts 3D printed to double check everything and since everything was fine, it was time to machine them. I prepared all of the parts in Fusion and milled them on a CNC machine, out of aluminium of course. And with all of the parts on the desk, let's take a look at them. We have two sets of wheel and motor pulleys the motor mounts with the clamps and some 3D printed parts, of course. To secure the pulleys to the wheels, I got some M5 by 50mm bolts and a few 3D printed spacers to keep everything aligned. The motor mount clamps to the truck with M6 by 18mm bolts and the motors are held with a couple of M4 by 8mm bolts. Then comes the pulley, which is held in place with the M5 grab screw. In between goes the 5M belt, which is a lot stronger than the 3M belt I used to have. And to protect everything from the environment, I printed some belt covers with flexible TPU material. Let's quickly put it all together to see how it looks and if everything is fitting right. At this point, let's talk about the actual specs. Using the eSkate calculator, we can calculate our speed, which under load comes right under 42 km an hour, which is around 5 km faster than the old drive chain. As I already said, the motors are 140 kV, which means they have a lot of torque, and the Flipsky site says the maximum motor torque is around 7 Nm. To actually calculate the torque at the wheels, we need to take the gear ratio into consideration, which is 36 teeth at the wheel, divided by 22 teeth at the motor, and that gives us a value of 1.63. Then let's multiply it with the 7 Nm of torque at the motor, 
and we're left with around 11.5 Nm at each wheel, so 23 Nm in total. Since this is the maximum torque of the motor, I'm guessing I'd get it while using a 12S battery, but at least we know that we are somewhere in the 20Nm range, which is really good. As a first assembly, I didn't use any thread locker and the wheel pulleys are not yet aligned, but I do have something pretty cool planned before we put it on the board and it's anodizing. Aluminium parts straight out of the machine always have some machining marks and they scratch super easily. There are many different ways you can finish them, but I chose anodizing since I've been playing around with the process for the last few months and I got pretty good at it. To remove the machining marks I simply sandblasted the parts and now they are ready for the rest of the process. I won't go into much detail here, but the first thing is to get the parts super clean. This is a chemical procedure where we grow a thin film of oxide on the surface which has tiny pores that can absorb dyes. With the film of oxide we can color the parts, but the grown film is also a lot harder than the raw aluminum surface, so it will protect the parts from scratches as well as oxidation. After the parts are super clean, they are put into an electrolysis bath until desired thickness of film is grown, and after that they can be dipped in any color you want. The parts turned out beautiful and this is the step that really gives them the final finish, so let's quickly get back to the shed and put it all together. I already showed you how these go together so I won't bore you with details again. This time I used some medium strength thread locker on all of the bolts to keep them tight. It took me some time to get everything aligned, but in the end everything turned out awesome and it's finally time to put it on the board. Since there's nothing on the deck at the moment, it's perfect time to clean it and put a new grip tape. In order to have both the trucks the same, I also got another one for the front, and since these wheels haven't seen some new bearings for years, now is the time to get them replaced as well. Time to screw the back truck to the deck and solder everything together. These motor wires are super thick and I had a lot of trouble fitting everything together since I didn't have much space. To help me organize the wires, I quickly designed a truck razor with a channel inside that will keep the wires in place and protect them from rocks etc. After connecting the face wires as well as the sensor cables, I got my remote receiver plugged in and it was time to close the electronics box. The last thing was to connect the battery and this battery did lose a lot of capacity since I wasn't so nice to it, but I already have some new cells waiting which will be able to give me around 30 km of range on a single charge. I also got a new spot welder from Secure which will be perfect for the new battery build. Let's connect the XT90 connector and finally close the battery enclosure as well. And the board is fully built. It's a huge upgrade compared to the last year and I can't wait to start riding it when the weather gets a little bit warmer. Before ending the video, I gotta show you how fast and smooth this thing is. I'm using a GoPro with a GPS to show you the speeds. It has almost double the torque of my previous setup, which already was a little bit too powerful, and these motors handle it with ease. They don't get hot and are super smooth on the road. Thank you so much for staying to the end of the video. Next thing would be to build a new battery pack and for it I have a new upgrade as well. It's a JDB BMS that shows you all of the cell voltages and temperatures while also giving you many programming options to customize the battery and keep it super safe. I did try out the secure welder and it was working really well, so I can't wait to show it to you in the upcoming video. Thanks so much for watching, let me know what you think about the new drive chain and I'll see you in the next one.